This is Twit. Uh, let's talk about Apple in China. Uh, there is, uh, and yeah, I'm rooting for the people in China. Uh, a couple yep. of things have happened in China that have caused up uproar and uprisings. Uh, the history of uprisings in China is pretty bloody and unhappy, but uh, I'm still rooting for you. Um, the first thing was, of course, these incredible COVID zero policies and the lockdowns. I remember hearing back in 2020 about apartment buildings, doors being welded shut so people yep. couldn't leave. And the thing is, it hasn't gotten any better uh, the Chinese uh, government has its own vaccine, which I'm told is not very effective, less than half of, as effective as the mRNA vaccines we're using in the West. Uh, she, uh, President Xi does not want to use the Western vaccines for reasons of national pride. There's also a problem that older folks in China, the, uh, the vaccination rate is very low. They've been very, they haven't been able to, very effective to get the vaccination spread out. So if COVID-0 were to be lifted, and there have been rumors this weekend, that that may be coming, that they may be relaxing their uh, restrictions. It could be economic devastation for China because you know what happens. You don't you don't get the immunities, you don't get the vaccine, you're going to get problems, population problems. Uh, but the COVID lockdowns have led to protests in the streets. There have also, and you've probably seen these videos of protests at iPhone City. Uh, in uh, in this is the Foxconn plant. In China, where 85%, it is said, uh, of the iPhones are made. And uh, already the warning has gone forth that uh, there will be a shortage this month of iPhones, especially the iPhone Pros, which are being made there. Um, and then, so the question, really, and then, of course, there's the issue. Foxconn isn't a uh, mainland China company. It's a Taiwanese company, but the factories in uh, China. Um, th then the question uh, arises, what happens if China decides uh, not to uh, allow Taiwan to continue independently? And that's going to be a big problem. This is the Zhengzhou uh, iPhone City plant where workers have uh, been revolting over COVID lockdowns, over unpaid uh, bonuses. They're headed for home. The, we had a story last week that the Chinese army was trying to get veterans into the factories. Um, a significant issue. So what does Apple do? Should Apple stay in China? The latest is Apple is trying to accelerate its plans to move manufacture to other countries. India, Brazil, Vietnam. And of course, Foxconn has a plant. They, I believe they've broken ground on a plant in the U.S. as well. How Renee, how big of a problem is this for Apple? I think it's well, I think it's a big problem in general. I think one of the parts that gets under like that doesn't get covered as well as it should be is that this is a bi-directional relationship. A lot of people talk about Apple being beholden to China because of a lot of because so much of their supply, their manufacturing all happens in southern China in China and Shenzhen and Guangzhou and uh Jiangdu, like all these places. But they also represent a massive part of especially southern China's economy. Um, and and th those jobs, you know, as, as incredibly problematic as they are, if they were to disappear, it would also be devastating for a large portion, uh, portion of China. Um, like the lockdowns, of course, are already devastating. I think it's in Apple's best interests, both uh, economically and just in terms of that golden road that Tim Cook keeps talking about. He wants to pave one stone at a time to have facilities where there are no questions about civil rights and protections and um, the, the care and safety of workers. I think that would be, uh, I think anything less than that is inevitably corrosive to Apple. So I think it is totally in their best interest to move production, not just to another place that that treats workers just as badly that doesn't happen to be China, but a place that actually treats workers well, uh, that has facilities. Um, I'm going to go on a mini rant and say that once again, a lot of people will say move it to the US, but we have in, with incredible negligence, totally destroyed our own ability to produce things. We don't value school anymore. We don't value especially trade schools. We don't invest in economic zones the way they do in other parts of the world. People who come from like parts of Europe or parts of Asia where they have very strong trade education have their pick of jobs here just because they're so hard to find. So it's not as simple as just picking up and moving the whole cloth back to the U.S. because we, we do not care about that. We don't fund it with our tax dollars. We don't support it in our local cities. We don't like have any sense of the importance of, of 
trade education here, uh, but to get it into places where where people are better treated, I think is absolutely necessary. The Wall Street Journal estimates about 300,000 workers are in that Zhengzhou, China, uh, iPhone city plant. Uh, where would what city would you go to in the United States where you could find three hundred thousand workers? You can't. You'd have to build it. You'd have to build an industrial zone somewhere in Middle America, like and invest in it the way that China invested in Shenzhen for decades. And then there's the issue of suppliers because all of China, all of the iPhone suppliers, most of them are in China, and it's a lot easier to transport those parts. To, remember, this is just an assembly plant. Uh, transport those parts to the assembly plant. Uh, now you'd have to ship them from. China or maybe move them as well. This is a complex supply chain built mostly by Tim Cook, right? And a lot of it isn't actually made in China. It's assembled in China. There are parts made from all over the world. They're all over it's the just world. Every, okay. A lot of it comes from China, but they, they are very good at, and they put everything next to each other. So it's like, you can just go over and talk about like how to fix issues. That is replicable, but it is not easy. And it requires, we, we want everything. We want to give nothing. Leon. That's just not a way to have a functional society. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, there is. This is the journal article from uh, from today. Uh, the headline is Apple makes plans to move production out of China. They have been making those plans for some time, but I guess the, there's a little more, more urgency, especially when you're getting a 40 percent cut in production uh, in your in your number one quarter for sell, for selling iPhones. Would we, why don't, if we, if we, let's say we could figure out how to make them in America, do we know how much more it would cost? So you could make it in America. You could do it in America. I, I understand and I totally 90% agree with what Richie said, but you can build it here. You could train people. People learn to do things every day in this country. We're now a service industry because everything is outsourced. But if you brought it back, people could do it. There's plumbers out here fixing stuff. There's engineers out here building stuff. Hey, I don't know what it's like where you are, but it's built. hard to get a plumber these days. Uh, well, come every, out, come out here because plumbers, plumbers are the number one jam out here. They're still naming their own race, but we got a ton of plumbers out here. I'm just saying. I, there's it's kids so going to hard, trade school. It's so hard to find people to work uh, here in Northern California, partly because the standard of living is high, and so it's expensive to live here. But uh, there are no handymen, no plumbers, no carpenters, nothing. There's waiting lists for our trade schools out here where kids are like basically not going to high school and going like they have Good. Like, like that program. So once you get like to the 10th grade, you can start going to these trade. Like Good. there's a waiting list now get a because skill. there's so many people and then going into here. trades and skills. So, yeah. So, I mean, again, people do see value in it. Not everybody is a rocket scientist or, you know, whatever. And that they they want to do those things. So again, we we could do the thing, but the problem is that the cost of even doing the thing to train the people to do the things, and then you know you can still get around OSHA and screw people over and have bad work environments, but you can't do it like you can in other foreign nations. So the cost of the iPhone, which everybody complains about, would be four thousand dollars. I don't know how much would it be. I mean, do, really seriously, would it double the price? Somebody was talking about uh, guitars. Was it the Gibsons, uh, the Les Pauls? That there are some made in Mexico. Two hours north, you can get some made in the United States. They're twice as expensive. A Fender. It was the Fender guitars. Okay. Twice as you expensive. You just look at the, the global rate of what people could pay, like minimum wages. Like we're, we're finally just getting to the point where uh, people are coming up from $5 and $7 an hour to getting $10 an hour. And it's going to break the economy. Like we're, we're finally getting to that point. Some of these places, especially like if you're getting shoes or people are working in these factories, they're making cents an hour or a dollar an hour. Like they're not making a lot of money. So- yeah, I, I understand there must be something wrong because they're not getting paid their bonuses and that's why they're not working. And that that small amount of money that they're getting, they still aren't even getting their money. Like, I, I couldn't imagine you could afford to do it here in America. The cost per employee plus the training, it would just be unfathomable as opposed to going to a third world country and saying, hey, we're going to build this infrastructure, give out 300,000 jobs. And yeah, you're only going to get paid X amount of dollars or cents, but you got jobs, you got stable work because everybody needs sneakers and everybody needs a phone. Who's going to say no to that? They're, they're just not. I, I, I was talking to somebody uh, who uh, worked in the sporting goods industry, and he said Nike has a history of doing this. As soon as workers become organized, they move to another country. But it's a lot easier to make a sneaker than it is to make an iPhone. There's a huge amount of training. Apple's invested millions in Foxconn. In fact, Apple's built specialized machines there in partnership with Foxconn to make these phones. It's created a whole industry. We wouldn't have, you know, DJI drones if it weren't for Apple and the iPhone miniaturizing so many of these parts and then other things that are being made in 
in uh, in uh, China as a result. We're seeing. I mean, this has been a whole beneficial cycle, except it's on the back of these workers who are now not so happy. Uh, do you go find somebody uh, who is less empowered? Do you go to India? Do you go to Brazil? Do you go to Vietnam? And should Apple be doing that? What do you What do you think, Georgia? I I think that I think that the, the whole system needs to be overhauled. To be honest, I think that it's a really sad thing when people can't afford to, um, you know, the amount of money that even workers that are here are making per hour is it's abysmal. It's absolutely oh, in Northern California. Abysmal. So our nineteen year old is a union grocery employee. I what makes a lot more than minimum wage. But you, he would have to have three roommates in a in a one bedroom apartment. It's just not. I think it's tenable. abhorrent. I think it's absolutely it's abhorrent. I don't I'm think sure it's just be, as bad in Montreal. It's 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 not as bad, but it's pretty bad. Like it's it's pretty horrific the amount of money that people make. So so yeah, I don't think that they should definitely be paying pennies on the dollar for people to be able to work and and we're reaping the benefits. And it's not really us. Let's be honest. It's the billionaires in these companies that are reaping the benefits. It's not us. It doesn't well, actually have to cost us a ton more for an iPhone. We, if we kind of push it, it that it way though, cut, don't we? No, not really. It's the stockholders and it's the companies. They're the ones that are making this profit. These are the ones that made the profit over COVID. They're not, they, they, they gouge us all of the grocery departments in prices saying COVID and they use that as a shield where they're making record yeah. profits. I don't buy it for an, a heartbeat. It's that they want to have, they want it's these greedy companies and billionaires and the fact that there is not this taxation to these companies that should be proportional to the amount of profits that they bloody well make. I'm sorry, you shouldn't be able to have zero taxes and you're making, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars to billions in profits. I think that that's absolutely ridiculous. I think that we need to start to claim back in, you know, that that it shouldn't be companies that are making all this money. It should be the people. We're doing all of the labor and then we're getting pennies on the dollar for it. And no, I don't think that you should be able to outsource and then you're not being taxed and we're not reaping the benefits either way. And then that would hopefully bring more jobs here because the entire system is just getting corrupt. And I think that it's at the point where people are really angry and understanding the game that's at play. It's no longer this shell game that they can keep from us and it, there's just so many companies that it's so egregious that they're like, oh, look at your carbon footprint when it's really not us. Let's be honest. Right. Like during COVID, we could tell the difference that still emissions were going up and it was like whatever, 10 companies that controlled 80 percent of all of the different greenhouse gases that are there. Like if I recycle or don't recycle, it's really just not yeah. even a ma yeah. marginal difference. Woohoo! <laughs> are you agreeing I'll with, your Twitter, with your Twitter? I'll step off the soapbox now. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's the thing I started the show with when I said, if I was going to be upset about the way That's that true. the world works, I wouldn't be able to do anything. We all personally pick and choose what we want to stand up and fight for. I know for a fact that working in those countries, in those conditions, there are worse stories than this that we heard three and four and five years ago. Yeah. And no one batted Remember an eye. Remember the suicide we, nets? Yeah, I, yeah. And I didn't, yep. And I didn't even want to bring that up because it just hurts my heart to even think about that. But that specifically, we've gone through so many things where people are just treated terribly. And to say that we can't bring jobs here, we won't do things here. Somebody in the chat asked me, like, you know, uh, have I raised uh, money for my employees because I have employees. The state said, hey, start in January, you've got to go up to $10 an hour from eight fifty, And then it said, you've got to go up to 11 and then tw I guess they capped it at like 13 But like now 13 is the minimum here in Jersey. You cross the street less than 15 minutes away, someone doing the exact same job is still only getting $8.50 an hour. And then you wonder why people are living below the poverty line. Whereas you can cross the bridge and you've got an increase of $5 with inside of a year, which has helped people dr dramatically. Um, so, yeah, it, it's terrible. But, I mean, those people walking out and 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 putting pressure on Apple, guess what? They're, they're going to do anything in their means possible to keep the uh, flow of iPhones going. I just hope that the next time they do it, they do and treat people a little better. Maybe give them a little bit more money. Maybe give one of those snack machines that they love giving out at Google and all the fancy tech places. Maybe they give out free lunches or something. Do something that seems like you care about the humans that are making your world work so you can get out on your yacht and get it stuck in the canal and live the dream that you're living.
I have. Well, don't you think that that's what they do? Is that they're just going to give you enough so everyone stops complaining, right? They're like, oh, we'll give you enough just so that you don't really do anything. You don't look how that we're st- like, you know, we'll give you five dollars while we're really taking a hundred. Like well, Jeff it Bezos always becomes that. Let's give employees- you. Jeff Bezos won't let his employees go to the bathroom, but right. he wants to tell me he's donating $100 million to the environment and homeless. Yeah. Like, don't yeah, give me money yeah. to homeless. Let exactly. people go to their bathroom. <laughs> yeah. let, and I, let people go to the bathroom. Yeah. Don't donate to the environment. Let people go to the bathroom. Uh, there's that? another thing I think that uh, billionaires do, which is they encourage these small-time political divisions and these fights uh, between blacks and whites and yes. Jews and Christians because they're much happier if you fight amongst yourselves than band together to bring down <laughs> the oligarchy. Uh, what happened to, What happened in Rome when there were problems? Bread and right? circuses, baby. Uh, yeah, exactly. The gladiatorial rings. Let's, let's bring back so that people can get involved in something that isn't fighting us. Yeah. Uh, I have to say, though, uh, uh, applause... For Tim Cook, what a diplomat he is. He's certainly, you know, the architect of this relationship with China. He's gone to China many times, sat down with the ruling powers in China, and has managed to make a commercial success in China, both as a manufacturing power and as a customer. China's a big part of uh, Apple's profits these days, uh, and kind of, you know, wend his way through the politics of it. And he did it again the other day. Elon Musk says, I'm going to war with Apple. Apple's 30% tax in the Apple store uh, is, I can't remember what he said, but bad. And, uh, and, and Apple is not buying any advertising. Ultimately, it says, do you believe in free speech, Apple? Do you believe in free speech? So what does Tim Cook do? Doesn't tweet. <laughs> Doesn't fall into the trap of tweeting back at uh, Elno, he invites him to the campus. And Elon is completely mollified and tweets pictures of the of the beautiful lake and how great Tim is. And oh, Tim says, we would never censor. We would never pull your app from the store. And I believe him. And then today, Elon tweets, and Apple is buying all the ads they used to buy. I am, you know what I came away with? That Tim Cook is good. Is that an iPhone in your hand? Wait a second. Is that an Apple Watch on your wrist? And do I do I see an iPad sitting there on the table? Oh my goodness! You are the perfect person to be watching iOS today, the show where Rosemary Orchard and I, Micah Sargent, talk all things iOS, TVOS, WatchOS, HomePod OS. It's all the OSs that Apple has on offer, and we show you how to make the most of those gadgets. Just head to twitch.tv/ios to check it out.